Okay, so in this video, I'll be reviewing my races in Bromley at the Open on, I believe it was the 10th of June, where I ran 11, 38, and 22, 84. So let's get started. So first off, let's find me first. So I'm right there. Before we even started the race, I actually was told to set up in Avalon 2 or 3, whichever one that was, but I was not focused. So I set up in one of these two lanes. I put the blocks out. I was about to do my run out and then I realized I was in the wrong lane because someone came up to me and told me. So I wasn't really focused in the race. Something similar happened in the 200, but I'll talk about that when we get to the 200. So set, you know, on your marks, get into the blocks. And we run into our first issue, which affected the race because I should have gone my fastest ever if you converted the win to zero. But even if you didn't convert this win to zero, because I think this win was actually negative, but let's see if I can convert. There we go. So look, it's thirty sixty five. Thirty. I can't draw a dot. Dot. Imagine that's a dot. Six. Five, five, and then compare that to me. I'm looking at is when first movement occurs. So you can see me start to move here. So 30, imagine that's a dot. So we can make one, make something, anything. Seven, five, five, then minus those from each other and by obviously you're going to be getting 0 0.1 so there's a 0 0.1 difference depending on how you how i calculate it changes a bit but it's roughly about a 0 0.1 difference i ran um 11.38 which means i should have been running 20 no, not 20 11 i'm just gonna draw numbers 11.28 which i didn't end up doing i've gone so far as to calculate an 11.23 at one point and the reason why these numbers are important is because this 11.28 is the exact same time that I would have ran if my PB of 11.18 was ran with zero win because if you remember it was ran with plus two win so this race should have equaled this run and my 11.06 with win if you convert that to no wind gives you 11.11 so the fact that I was so close to my PB time in this race, but I wasn't able to do it purely because of my reaction time, says a lot. Because <laughs> again, the reaction time wasn't my reaction from the blocks, but it's the delay between my reaction to the, my reaction between these guys and obviously myself, not my reaction to the gun. Because based off of this, if these guys reacted, that's say exactly 0.1, my reaction time was 0.2, which is extremely slow and it does add up. Because if you just look at the rest of the race, just look at my arms. You can just watch me spin. They just spin, spin, spin. And about 25, 30 ish meters, I'm about fourth place. I think I was actually roughly in line with this guy. So I'm around fourth place, which is really interesting considering the fact that everyone had a point one lead on me. I was able to catch up so quickly and then just drive home. If I was this guy, this is the guy that won, he pulled away from everyone else. But I feel like I deserved to be in second place if my positioning was just better. But it wasn't so I couldn't reap such benefits and I have to settle for what I, what I have. But other than that, my technique was really, really good. The stride length could have been better. There's always some stuff involving my hips that are a hindrance towards my speed. But other than that, the run was really good and I really don't have much to say on what i could be doing to work on it because you can even see from my arms my arms are just pumping they're splitting the way they're supposed to be there's not much wasted movement my shoulders are a bit tight but that's nothing crazy and my legs are moving as quick as they can we're landing underneath my center of mass if we can get it from this so i kind of can't and my legs aren't too bent at the knees they're just bent just enough to get that rebound off the ground everything looks solid everything's great and I only placed where I placed because of my bad reaction time. Because when I was running, I could feel it around, uh, I want to say here. I was like, the guy who 
won the race. So this guy, I felt like I could catch him, but I just didn't have enough ground to catch him because I just gained so much speed, but I wasn't able to show that speed because of where I was placing. And obviously these numbers don't really matter. What well, I'm about to say, sorry, doesn't really matter because it didn't really happen in the race. But for this race, my stride length was, oh no, that's light, so you can't really see it probably, two. 204 centimeters or 2.4 if you want to put a point there and my frequency was 4.31 but i did the maths and if you fix my reaction i sorry my, yeah my reaction time my freak my stride length doesn't change obviously but my frequency does and it goes from 4.31 to 4.39 and that is a major difference that was a was a affected my race because because the slow reaction made it so that my frequency looked like it got slower when in reality it didn't because there's more time to spread out the frequency but my frequency stayed the same if we just remove the reaction time it was about this but because of my slow reaction it hindered my time and i suffered for it next we'll get started on a 200 where we had similar problems i should be about here i think that might be me wait is it I'm supposed to be, oh wait, I have to open this up. I'm supposed to be like here somewhere. I can't really see it, but I'm in, I'm in one of these. And similar to last last one, let's say that could be me. I can't really see properly. I didn't stand up. Yeah, that's me, definitely. So that's me. And I set up in the blocks here. I'd made the same stupid mistake that I did in the 100 where I was told to get into a specific lane and I miscounted. Well, this time I actually focused, so I miscounted because... This is lane three, I'm in lane four, and I tried to count the lanes, and I counted like three or four times, and I kept getting back to the third lane, so I went into the third lane, not realizing I was actually in the fourth lane, so it was a bit better than last time, I was completely out of it, but I got into the wrong lane again, and getting into the blocks, and I just really want to focus on this guy, because this is the guy that won, and if you compare his technique to mine, there's a lot of things that we can see that are hindering my 200 that I should be doing, so the first thing is actually something that I didn't really talk about in 100 because the main problem wasn't really with the technique per se, but mainly with just my reaction because I was trying to time the gun and the gun went off and I thought it did, so I delayed. But if you look at his front leg right there, notice how he literally drives straight out the blocks. Straight out, low heel recovery, then he drives and then low heel recovery again. For me, I can't do the first step, but I can always usually do the second step. But when you look at me here, look at my legs, drive out, leg cycles up, drive out. The leg that should never cycle up, my second leg, it cycles up as well. And I've just lost so much ground on everyone else as I'm trying to go around. This guy is well ahead of everyone else and I'm still just here. Because to me, I don't really care about where everyone else is. I care about where he is. I already knew he was going to probably win this because no one had PBs anywhere near him. I think we had one person who was running 21 other than him and they weren't running low 21 like he was. So he was a clear favorite to win this. And going around, and the next thing you know is, is if I can get the right step, it's just his stride length is crazy. Look at, look at these legs. How do you make a stride length that wild, wide? Compare that to me where not much is really going on right now. There's not much of stride length. I don't yeah, that's the why that's my stride length is. Whilst this guy, you can clearly tell that he has a lot of pit mobility because that is a crazy position to be able to get into. And not just get into you once, but get into for every single one of your steps. And this is what separates him from me. Not just the mobility that he has, but also the fact that in his race plan for the first, well, not just the first 100, but especially for the first 100, he's stride length dominant, whilst I'm stride rate dominant. Which is great for a hundred, but if you're running a two hundred, you don't really get to pull it off. For example, my stride length in a two hundred is about point one meters longer than my stride length in a one hundred, maybe even a bit more. So, trying to use stride rate to win is not a very good tactic because every single time your legs turn over, you're losing energy, and the less energy you have for that straight, the less power you're gonna have. But weirdly enough, when I got to the straight, I didn't really have 
lack of energy, but I wasn't able to catch him just purely because I wasn't using the right strategies to be moving to catch him. And he has a high stride rate as well, but he also has a really long stride length, which is what really allows him to pull away. Because if I'm racing against someone who has a 1.5 meter stride length, knowing full well that I can easily average two meters, if our stride rates are the exact same, the gap's going to be massive, just like how it was here. And the next thing that was really amazing was how we went around that bend. Because you can see here, just focus on this arm. Focus on what it's doing. His arm comes around, and you swing in it, and then you make sure that as he goes around the bend, it stays in line with the track. He doesn't let his body do what it wants to do, with especially with his arms, but he makes sure that his arm stays in line with the, the lane. Specifically, the lane on the outside, he wants to make sure that it's always angled at perpendicular, well, not perpendicular, not a perpendicular angle, a parallel, a parallel angle. You want to always make sure that your arms are parallel to the line, especially when you go around that bend. Because if your arm's going in one direction, but the bend is going in another, that means you're going to waste a lot of energy. There were a few problems that he had that I didn't have, which was that he was going, he went to the outside of the lane, which is actually all right around the bend because it means you have a less tight bend to deal with. But he also drifted to the other side of the, the lane from the outside to the inside. Whilst I came around the bend, me right there, sorry, I'll imagine the arrow is the other direction. Me right there, I came around the bend. My arms weren't very good. My shoulders are clearly tense, but I come around the bend and I stay in the middle of the lane and I keep going. But here's the big kicker, because if I did this, I'm not saying I would have beat him, but I could have catched him and been right on his shoulder. If you look at our hip heights, I might actually be able to draw it. So this is where mine is. He's sunk down, so this doesn't really count. Let me see if I can just get his hip height max velocity. Let's see, when he whips his leg down, make it fair. And that is his, because of the angles, my one does look a bit higher. But if we can get me right where I am here, I can guarantee you my hip height will be about there. And the reason why I'm talking about my hip height so much is because the higher up your hips are from the ground, that means you're producing more vertical force. And the more vertical force you're able to produce, that means the longer your stride length is going to be able to be. And the longer your stride length is going to be able to be, the better it's going to be for you. Because you're going to be able to travel further. Because the lower down your hips are, the less space you have to whip your legs down the track, well, behind you and then back in front of you, which means your stride length has to suffer to make sure that you can get your leg back down. And the next thing really worth noting is just look at how his legs move. You can see his legs come out, stretch, then pound down into the track and he rebounds back up. If you just switch to me, look at me. It kind of just looks like I'm crashing into the ground. And I'm trying not to fall over. Really powerful, but there isn't much of a way to use the power that I have. I'm really just crashing into the ground because my hips just aren't as high as his are. And with every step I take, my stride length, not stride length, sorry, my um, angle of attack on the ground at times is actually better than his. It might be this one. No, it's not. But sometimes he overstrides, whilst me, I don't really overstride much. But my stride length is nowhere near as wide. If it was, we'd be able to catch him. And as you can see, I did not come second. I came fourth for the same reason. My stride length was not as wide. Everyone else that beat me opted for a, a length dominant strategy to try and win this 200. Whilst me, I focus on a stride rate dominant fashion. And as you can see, it clearly doesn't work. And by the end of this, I ran 22.84, which is excellent because I'm only 0 0.08 off of my 200 meter PB. But something worth noting, and this is the reason why I know that the strategy that I employed here was very wrong, is the last time I ran a 200 at Bromley was my PB, 22.76. And when I came off the bend, right, sorry, right there, I did something very different to what I normally did. I literally told myself, I don't have enough. I don't know if I have enough energy to come around that bend to catch the person that was in front of me. So I decided, okay, you know what? I'll just open up 
and just let my legs cycle whilst trying to be as efficient with my steps as possible. Not trying to be powerful, just try and be efficient, try and last and get to the finish line. And as you can see by the time I ran here and the time I ran there, there was a 0 0.08 difference because I would say I probably came around the bend faster here than I did back then, but I was in a much better state in my other race because whilst I felt more powerful in this race, around the bend, I had a lot of energy that I knew I could just hammer home. I could not catch this person. I couldn't catch him. But maybe things would have been different and I probably would have caught him, but I could have potentially switched to third place if I did the exact same thing and I opted for just trying to open up, not just open up my stride, but try and maintain my stride being opened and do my absolute best to come home. But something that I'm really excited to talk about, which you're going to be seeing two weeks from now, is my video on analyzing the race that I had five days from this race, from 15th of June, where the 100 was a bit lackluster, but the 200, especially on that final 100, was a very interesting thing to talk about. But that's this for the analysis of my Bromley races, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.